Hello everybody and welcome back to the vlog. It has been a while. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. For those who are new here, hi, my name is Dorothea. I make crochet tutorials and crochet patterns and I share them here on my YouTube channel and in my online shops on Etsy, Reverly and Lovecraft. Today is Monday and we have a very busy and at the same time very exciting week ahead of us. My goal for today is to answer all the emails that came over the weekend, then finish the voiceover for my new crochet project. Uh, I am currently working on a crochet pattern for baby socks and by the time you watch this video, the pattern and the tutorial, so the video tutorial will be already available on my YouTube channel, my blog and in my online shops. Then I have to go to the post office. Uh, I have a couple of things that I have to return and send. I have to open a package and sort out the yarn situation. And if I will have enough time, uh, it would be great if I could finish the blog post where I am sharing five things I wish I would have known before buying a rigid heddle loom. So it's quite a lot of work for one day, but I hope I can do everything and hopefully finish everything today. It's already Tuesday. Monday went by so fast. I didn't finish all the tasks yesterday, so I needed to prioritize and very up on my to-do list was actually to finish the video tutorial for you guys. Now, I am very happy to report that the video tutorial is complete. All I need to do now is to upload the video to YouTube and design the thumbnail. And I'm going to do that today. In addition to all of that, we are going to have some fun and open the yarn packages. However, I'm going to start with the most important task first and upload the video to YouTube so you guys can watch it. The video is uploading, so let's open the packages. I ordered the yarn from my favorite two shops and those are Yarn Plaza, which is this cute pink box and Love Crafts and this is this yellow package. Now there is no special yarn in any of those two packages. If I'm not mistaken, it's all 100% cotton yarn or at least some sort of cotton blend. And that is because when I last checked, I was almost out of some colors I use most and this is the yarn I usually use for my patterns. You would think, well, but you don't really need that much yarn for a baby item. Well, you are absolutely right, but the thing is, I don't make just one item per project. I have to finish a couple of them before the pattern is ready, and that eats up quite a lot of yarn. I think I should start collecting the yarn labels, maybe just for a month, just for fun, and we would be able to actually see how much yarn do I use on a monthly basis, especially when I'm working on something larger in size, like a blanket or something like that. This could be a really interesting project. I could do that for April. Leave the number of skins in the comments and I will let you know. The second package is for something very near and dear to my heart. Recently I got this idea. I was probably way too long on Instagram and the idea was what if I would start making amigurumi toys? And I say it, it's very close to my heart because I actually started my crochet journey with amigurumi toys. I fell in love with those tiny animals and how detailed and cute they can be. I just want to get back on making patterns for other things as well, not just for baby items. So I am planning to make a couple of toys in the future. That's why I've ordered a bunch of yarn called Paintbox yarn, which is 100% cotton yarn. It's DK weight yarn because it has to be on a thinner side when it comes to amigurumi toys. I think I ordered almost every color they offer. 
Uh, that's why the package is so big and full of yarn. But I am actually very familiar with this yarn already. It's very nice and high quality. So if you are into Amigurumi toys, I definitely recommend this yarn. It's one of the best in my opinion. Especially for Amigurumi, I like everything about it. From the colors they offer, how well the fibers are twisted, how much is in one skein, everything. You have to try it out. Like I said, it's a bunch of uh, cotton yarn. And those are the colors that I think I will need more than just one skein. So that's black. I have two skeins of black. Then I have three skeins of beige color and two skeins of white. And one is, I think, um, I think it's of white. And the rest of them are here. With those colors, I think I can, I can create any pattern I like. Um, it's so versatile and all of them are so beautiful. So all I have to do now is to find them their new home. Hi guys, today is Wednesday, it's almost the end of the day and I've managed to finish all the tasks on my to-do list. The new blog post for a new crochet pattern is ready. The blog post where I write about things I wish I have known before buying a rigid head loom is finally done and I've managed to finish the newsletter that will be sent out earlier next week. Being productive feels actually very good and I'm so happy to finally share a new tutorial with all of you guys. One more thing I want to mention here is this beautiful book called Interventive Weaving on a Little Loom by Shine Mitchell. I hope I said that right. So this book is everything you need to start weaving with Rigid Huddle Loom and much more. It has so much information and so many useful tricks and tips. So if you're a beginner weaver yourself, I would definitely recommend reading this book. It's one of the best, if not the best on the market. I'm using this book all the time, it's really that good.
morning and happy Thursday guys. Today is my last day in the office this week. Tomorrow is a holiday and even though my office is a part of my apartment where I live, I do my best to give myself time off away from crocheting. This seems so funny to me when I say it out loud because I love crocheting so much all the time but still crocheting is my job and if I don't separate those two I get creative blocks and burnouts way too often. That is why I am very intentional with my time and how much do I spend it for my work and how much for my personal life. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions. What would you like to know about me and my work? And I pick three of your questions and I will answer them right now. App Crochet Shop would like to know how long have you crocheted uh, and how did you start? So if I'm not mistaken, many people start very early when they are still kids. They're usually crocheting and knitting their whole lives. I think I actually started crocheting quite late. It was in my last year of university when I was still finishing my master's degree. My partner and I, we just moved to a different country. I did not know many people there. And because I was sitting behind the computer and books all day long, I just needed a new hobby. A good friend of mine uh, actually started crocheting herself and encouraged me to try it too. I remember I started with Amigurumi toys and soon after that started with tiny baby shoes and clothes. That is the way Crowy Pattern was born and how everything started. So Julian Lieber 2 official is asking when did you decide to create your own studio? The apartment we currently live in has one additional room and I'm using that additional room as my tiny studio. So I was actually lucky enough to have a studio way before Crowby Patterns got enough pattern sales and page views and video views to be my full-time job. And all of that gave me time to put together this beautiful room and I surrounded myself with yarn and books that spark creativity in me. I am actually very grateful for that. And all of that was possible with the help and support of my partner in life, whom I love and adore. And actually all of you who are watching my videos, following my work and buying my patterns, I'm very grateful from the bottom of my heart for each and every single one of you. It, it really means a lot. So one thing that is very important if you work from home is to draw a line between your work time and your free time otherwise there is a good chance you will be working all day long which is actually a perfect path to to burn out and health issues unfortunately i am actually talking from my own experience here so be good to yourself and take care of yourself especially now when we all are more or less working from home and changing the scenery is a luxury these days. So take care of yourself, be good to yourself, give yourself time and yeah, draw a line between your personal life and your working time. It's very important. The next one is from Anacho89. Uh, I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, she is asking, uh, what is the softest yarn for a baby blanket? Um, my choice would be Rico Creative Cotton. The first and the most important thing is that that's cotton, which is perfect for baby items because you can throw the item into the washing machine and later into the dryer and that's it, it's fine. You don't have to worry too much, which is very important with baby clothes. Uh, just make sure the yarn ends are nicely secured between the stitches and you are good to go. But that is with more or less every cotton yarn. The softest in my yarn stash is definitely Rico Creative Cotton. It has this silky effect, but it's also at the same time very soft. The color availability is also great. All in all, a perfect yarn for baby blankets and baby clothes in general. I would definitely recommend it. Okay, so this is the end of this week's video. I'm going to go and clean the studio a bit, just so when I come back on Monday, it's nice and clean and I can start fresh. Next video is going to be a video tutorial. I'm not going to tell you what kind of video just yet, but I think you will like it. Those tutorials usually get a lot of views, which means people like them. 
I guess, but you never know, we will see. It was very nice chatting with all of you, my loves. Thank you so much for watching and keeping me company. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe and well, and I see you guys very soon. Bye!